So, today is the day I am finally building my computer. Uh, or in, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna have it built by a fellow YouTuber called Stefan from uh, the channel Tech Magnet. He knows how to build computers. I certainly don't. Okay, so I've actually managed to find Stefan, which is a good thing because he is the brains behind this project and also he brought some of the uh, components all the way from Vienna to Berlin. So he drove uh, over, I, I, don't know, I think like 10 hours or something like that. So I'm very happy to have found him. It is a very important step. And now we're actually gonna go and uh, build these computers. We're actually gonna build two computers, one for Stefan, one for me. Both rigs are going to be for video editing, but both will be a little bit different and we'll have exactly. some, uh, some challenges along the way. <laughs> so if you want to see Stefan's build, you'll have to go to, uh, to his channel. I'll leave links somewhere in, in the description, in the cards, everywhere. And if you want to see mine, then uh, stay tuned and let's do this. Okay, so before we start, I have two big fat disclaimers to make. First, I am not a pro computer builder and this is actually the first PC I've ever built. So none of what you see here has any educational or instructional value. This is purely meant to entertain. Still, a ton of my subscribers asked for this video, so here we have it. Second, a bunch of the parts used in my build were actually sent to me by various companies. Basically, most of them were. And even though I'm really happy with the final results, again, keep this in mind as you watch the video. Okay, disclaimer's over, let's get to the fun stuff. So, I built this PC because until now, I edited all of my videos on this tiny four-year-old Ultrabook with a U-series i5, four, I repeat, four gigs of RAM, as well as a tiny 128 gig SSD. Even the simplest export took me over an hour, and I literally only had enough space on it for the project files of a single video at a time. As you can imagine, I got pretty frustrated, and I wanted to get myself a better camera to start shooting in 4K in the future as well, so I needed a proper editing rig. In the end, I decided that I really wanted four things from this PC. I wanted it to be powerful, duh, quiet so I could record next to it, and I prefer function over form, but I also wanted it to be not hideous. And as silly as it may sound to you, I wanted it to have USB Type-C on the front of it because it's 2017 and I can't buy an expensive machine I want to keep using for years that wouldn't have at least one Type-C port. The number one advice from you guys was that I should get a Ryzen CPU for the build. And I did indeed buy the 1800X. Expensive stuff, but what the heck, it should last me a few good years. Since Premiere Pro apparently takes good advantage of CUDA cores, I wanted to buy a GTX 1080 to begin with, but Zotac decided to send me their 1070 Amp Extreme instead for free, so after seeing a few reviewers claiming that it is super quiet and still pretty powerful, I thought, why the hell not? As for the motherboard, I didn't have any specific requirements, but MSI actually sent me a really fancy X360 Power Gaming Titanium. And I don't think I would have invested quite this much money into a board myself, but hey, it sure as hell is a nice board and has super handy reset and power buttons, as well as a little screen showing you its status, which together saved me from a lot of trouble at the initial setup. I got 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, which is DDR4, comes in black, and thankfully doesn't have any RGBs, so it should be fast and it should look clean. 16 gigs should, I think, be enough for now, but I can just buy more in the future if I need to. In terms of storage, I got a 240 gig HyperX SSD, which is already twice as big as what's on my laptop, but WD also sent me an 8 terabyte WD red drive. So, like, going from 128 gigs to an 8 terabyte drive means that I get more than 60 times the storage now, while also improving speeds with the HyperX SSD. I think storage is one of the areas that has improved the most for me coming from this tiny laptop. To keep things quiet, I got everything that requires a fan from Be Quiet, including a dark power 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply, 
and I don't know how to evaluate power supplies, but Stefan told me that this one should serve my build very well, so I'll just trust him on that. I got an extra Be Quiet Silent Wing fan to replace a stock fan in my case, and to keep things even quieter, I also got a water cooler for my CPU as well, namely the 240mm Silent Loop. And all of this was built into a pretty baller Cooler Master Master Case Maker 5 case. Now, if Cooler Master actually set out to create a product name that would sound like absolute gibberish, then I think with this one they hit the jackpot. But anyway, this case was one of the parts that I was the most particular about. It's one of the only cases I could find that had Type-C on the front, it has a bit of tempered glass on the side, and I love how it's super modular and how it manages to look aggressive and transformery while still looking pretty clean and elegant. I also threw in a single RGB strip from BitPhoenix to the top of the case just to give this whole build this kind of glow for good measure. In terms of accessories, I have my 25 inch Dell UltraShop, which I absolutely adore, but I'll donate it to my girlfriend as soon as I upgrade to a 4K screen to start shooting and editing in 4K in the very near future. My mouse is also not new. It is the Logitech MX Master I've had for about two years now, and this is another product that I am a huge fan of. And then I've heard everyone talking about mechanical keyboards on YouTube, and I was considering buying one when a company called Easy SMX reached out to me and sent me their mechanical keyboard. And I thought before I make a big investment into an expensive mechanical keyboard, it'd be good to find out whether I even like mechanical keyboards at all. So I thought, why not? And I got their keyboard. Okay, so that's it for all of the parts. And again, I'll save you from having to watch a build log because there's just so many other people who do that better than me. But here's a few things that I liked and disliked about the experience. First of all, building a PC is fun, and I'd definitely do it again. Second, I kept hearing from everyone how easy it is to build a PC. And yeah, it's not rocket science, but it was also slightly more challenging than I thought it would be. And I was very, very happy to have someone more experienced than me help me out. So again, big thanks to Stefan. And if you're a complete novice trying to either do a lot of research before getting into it or try to find a friend who's done it before, it will make your life a lot easier. Here's a good example. My graphics card was so huge that it didn't originally fit in into the case and we had to remove a few hard drive slots to make space for it. I got lucky because my case was modular, but as a novice, I had no idea that even for a case this big, I'd still have to go and research the size of each of the parts. You probably should. In the same way, my CPU cooler, even though Be Quiet sent it to us directly for our Ryzen builds, came with no adapter for AM4 sockets. Stefan's did and he gave me his, thanks again, well, he built a pretty funny workaround for his that you can see on his channel. And I know Be Quiet will actually ship a free adapter to users upon request, but again, there are lots of small pitfalls like this. So unlike me, do your research. But anyway, in the end, the PC was built and overall, I'm really, really happy with the results. I didn't care too much about color matching the parts or anything like that, but the fact that the case let me connect most of the cables at the back and also hides the bottom part of the PC, which is indeed a little messy, means that I ended up with a PC that still looks quite clean. So not hideous, check. The case obviously has type C, so check for that again. And most importantly, the PC is also silent. I can switch between high and low airflow on the case with a button. The fans on a graphics card stop spinning if I don't do anything that is super demanding. And the be quiet fans are, well, really quiet. I should have no trouble recording audio next to this computer. But does it perform? Well, since my only real benchmark is my old laptop, I thought it would be fun to compare the two. I actually tried to edit this very video on both my old laptop and on my new PC, and uh, here's the results. So with that super unprofessional test, I can conclude that it is indeed powerful. Check. As for the keyboard, well, I didn't actually read the description before I accepted it, so I thought the pictures meant that you can switch between these various colors, but no, 
These are hard coded. Each line has its own colors. So it's a little more rainbowy than I would like. And I wish it was actually RGB, but other than that, it feels surprisingly premium and it types very well for a keyboard that is this affordable. So I can definitely recommend it to the colorfully frugal ones among my viewers. For me though, I'll probably upgrade to something that is a little less flashy. So that's it. I am super happy to finally have a proper computer. And thanks to all the companies as well as Stefan who made that happen. You should definitely check out his video as well. Again, links to it are everywhere. And I have also put links to all of the parts I used in this build in the description of this video in case you want to buy any of them for your own build. Whatever you think, let me know in the comment section below or tweet them at me at TechAltar. I love reading your tweets. If you want to see my regular content where I don't build computers, but instead analyze the tech industry, then hit the subscribe button and the bell button next to it for notifications. Follow me on all of my social media channels. I'm TechAltar on all of them, and I'll see you in the next one.